ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट द लेक्चर सो बिफोर वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट अस डिस्कस विद लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस इन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्टी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉस्टिंग देन वी विल डिस्कस फीचर्स एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉस्टिंग we will discuss comparison between contract costing and job costing treatment of important items in cost accounting format of contract account treatment of profits in case of completed and uncompleted contracts as per as 7 basic numerical on contract costing so starting with definitions a contract is basically an agreement between two parties known as contractor the person who is going to perform the job and the contractor who has given the job wherein specific job orders are undertaken for a relatively large number of time a long time period which may take years to complete and the billing for the same is done after completion of the contract whereas contract costing is basically the method of cost accounting which is applied in case of businesses where separate contracts of non repetitive nature are undertaken for example it is employed by undertakings which are engaged in building roads bridge constructions ship building etc contract price a contract price is basically the value for which the contract is undertaken the features of contract costing number one contracts are largely in large size therefore a contractor usually carries out a small number of contracts at a particular point of time number two it takes more than one year to complete number three the work contract the work on contract is carried out at the site of contract and not in the factory premises whatever the work is being going to be done in case of contract it will be conducted at the site of the contract not at the factory premises and each contract is undertaken as a cost unit a separate contract account is prepared for each contract in the books of contractor to ascertain the profit or loss on each contract nearly all labor cost will be direct work most expenses like electricity telephone insurance etc are also direct especially subcontractors may be appointed or employed for say electrical fittings welding glass work painting work etc plant and equipment may be purchased for the contract or may be hired for duration of the contract main points of distinction between contract costing and job costing that means we are going to discuss between difference between contract costing and job costing knowingly we always consider job as a small contract and contract as a long job the first point of difference is contract is generally big while job is small it is well said a job is a small contract and contract is a big job as i had said earlier also the number of jobs undertaken at a time are usually large as compared to number of contracts because contracts are generally much bigger in size in contract costing most of the cost are chargeable direct to contract accounts under job costing direct allocation to such an extent is not possible jobs are usually carried out in factory premises while contract are done at the customer site or contract site jobs usually take less time to get completed whereas contract involves long time duration for its completion payments for the job are made in full once it gets completed whereas payment for the contract is done in installments depending upon its degree the basic procedure for costing of contract account is as follows number 1 we will prepare contract account contract account is basically the uh, similar it is similar to the profit and loss account and it is the responsibility of whom it is the responsibility of the contractor contractor prepare contract account on behalf of contractee so that he can discuss whether he is getting profit or loss from the particular contract direct cost 
most of the cost of contract can be allocated directly to the contract and all direct costs are debited to the contract account just like in profit and loss account. Direct cost or contract include material, labor and supervision, direct expenses, depreciation of plant machinery, subcontract costs, etc. Whereas there are some indirect costs also. This, these costs are also debited to the contract account, just like PL account. Such contracts are often absorbed on some arbitrary basis as a percentage on prime cost or material cost or wages cost because we always uh, absorb the indirect cost on certain basis. Overheads are normally restricted to head office and storage cost. Transfer of materials or plant. Whenever we are using material or plant in a particular contract, if that material or plant is left over, we can transfer it to the other contract. So whenever we are uh, transferring the contract material or plant to other, other contract, we have to credit it in the contract account. Contract price. Contract price found its place in the contract account credit side because it's a income part. So whenever a contract is not complete at the end of any financial year, we will not write contract price in the credit side. We will have to write work in progress. On the other hand, in case of completed contract, we have to write in the credit side contract price. Profit or loss on the contract. After entering all the elements of the contract, all the expenses, all the incomes of the contract account, we are left with the either profit or loss. The profit or loss will have to be entered in the contract account, debit side or credit side as the case may be. Treatment of some important items in contract costing. We have to treat, we have to give special treatment to certain items in contract costing, especially, uh, especially, especially in the contract account. Like number one is contract, and uh, uh, number one is cost of materials. Materials could be, uh, we can purchase it from the market or we can get issued from the store department or we can get transferred it from the other contracts. So all these uh, materials which we are in, uh, getting engaged from any other source, we have to get it debited. Material return to store. Whatever material is left over after completion of the contract, yeah, after at the end of the accounting year, we have to return it to the store. For example, cement, sand, pipes, bricks, etc. These are later returned to the store accompanied by material return store, return note. Materials as at site at the end of each accounting period, if a contract is incomplete, we are left with the closing stock of material. The closing stock of the material will have to be shown at the credit side as material at site. Next item is plant depreciation. The plant we are using in contract account, it gets depreciated by its use. So there are two methods of dealing with the depreciation. Number one is contract account is debited with the cost of, let me open my pen, right? Cost of plant installed at the end of the year or when the plant is no longer required, the plant is revalued and contract account is credited with this revalued or depreciated figure. That means in the debit side, we will have to show opening balance of the plant and in the credit side, we will have to show credit balance of the plant. In case the plant is sold on the completion of the contract, the contract account is credited with sale proceeds. The net effect of the above debit and credit will be that the contract account will stand debited with the amount of depreciation, which is the difference between the value of plant debited and value of plant credited. The method is generally used on long contract, which extend over more than one year because depreciated value of the plant is credited to the contract account and brought down as an opening balance in the next period. Alternatively, contract account is simply debited with the amount of depreciation if in case of small contracts or the plant is being used for less than 180 days, that is less than half a year. It is usual to use this method when plant is sent to contract only for a short period. However, 
when a plant is hired for a contract, a charge for the hire of plant is debited to the contract account as a direct expense. Next is subcontract cost, work of a specialized nature for which facilities are not internally available is offered to a subcontractor. For example, steel work, painting work, glass work, etc. It is usually carried out by the subcontractor who are accountable to the main contractor and the cost of such work is charged to the contract account in the debit side. Payment based on architect certificate. As we know that contract is a long job. It never completes in a single year. Whenever we are going to make contract account for a particular period, we will have to charge the profit or loss till date of completion of the contract. At that time, if the profit is not realized, actually, we will have to consider the architect certificate of work completion. So here it's mentioned, in case the contract is small, full payment is usually made on the completion of contract. But in a large contract, a system of progress payment is agreed by the parties. In this system, part payments of the contract amount are paid from time to time on the basis of certificate issued by the architect. If the particular work which is claimed by the contractor is not certified by the architect, the payment could not be made to the contractee or to the contractor and he could not declare his profits. So he can declare profits only for the certified amount of the contract certifying the value of work that is actually completed. Such payment is received by the contractor are usually credited to the personal account of the contractee. It should be noted that such payments are not entered in the contract account. Next is work in progress, work certified and uncertified. The whatever work is still left in the contract comes under the category of work in progress. In that case, again, we have two categories, work certified and work uncertified. The architect of the contract will certify the work which is being claimed as completed by the contractor, but he will certify the work which he thinks as get completed. Remaining work will be uh, treated as uncertified work. Then in case of work certified, it will be presented, it will be shown in the contract account credit side under the head work in progress as at mm -hmm. value. That means it will incur profit element. It will incur the element of profit, right? On the other hand, work uncertified is that work which is claimed by the contractor. Okay. However, the contractor, jo hai, however, the architect has not certified it as a result. It will be shown in the contract account credit side under the head work in progress, but it will be valued at cost. Both the work certified and uncertified will appear on the credit side of the contract account and also on the asset side of the balance sheet, right? Next important item is retention money and cash ratio. It is usual practice not to pay the full amount of work certified. The contractee may pay a fixed percentage, say 80% or 90% of the work certified by the architect, depending upon the terms of the contract. This is known as cash ratio. The balance amount not paid by the contract is known as retention money. For example, if cash ratio is 75%, the retention money will be remaining 25%. This retention money is a type of security for any defective work which may be found in the contract later on. This also works as a deterrent for the contractor to leave the contract incomplete if he finds the contract unprofitable. The retention money may also be adjusted against penalties that became due if the contract is not completed within the stipulated time as per the terms of the agreement. Extra work. Sometimes the contractor is required to do some extra work like additions or alterations in the work originally done as per the agreement. The contractor will charge extra money for such extra work and the cost of such ex extra work is debited to the contract account and extra price realized is credited to the contract account. Now the format of contract account. In the format, as I've already discussed, it is just like P&L account, profit and loss account. It is basically the nominal account. 
all the items of expenses will be debited and all the items of income will be credited or transfers will be credited. For example, material purchase debited, material received from store debited, material received from other contract debited, wages debited, in net expenses debited, plant and machinery opening balance debited, wages accrued debited, expenses accrued debited. Work in progress in case of uncompleted contract under two categories, work certified, work uncertified. Work certified at value, work uncertified at cost. Material returned to store credited, sent to other contract credited. Cost of material sold will be credited. Material closing stock credited, plants closing stock credited. After posting all the entries in the contract account, the balance would be the notional profit or notional loss, right? Next is profit distribution in case of completed or incomplete contract. If the contract is complete and if the contractor is getting profit, that profit will be transferred to p and l account credit side. If he is incurring loss in the completed contract, that loss will be transferred to debit side of p and l account. On the other hand, in case of incomplete contract, if there is profit, that profit will not be transferred to p and l account 100%. Only a part of profit will be transferred to p and l account and rest of the part of the profit, which is notional profit, expected profit, will be transferred to the work in progress account. Similarly, in case of loss, the amount will be transferred to the debit side of P and L account. Right? Let's take certain examples. First of all, whatever profit to be transferred to P and L account and whatever profit will have to be transferred to work in progress account, that calculation depends upon accounting standard 7. So as for the accounting standard 7, first of all, the contractor will have to calculate the percentage of completion of work, which is calculated with the help of the formula work certified by the architect upon total contract price. Based on this percentage of completion, the accounting standard 7 has defined three stages. If the work completed is below 25%, no profit will be transferred to p and account. That means after posting all the entries, if the contractor is getting profit, expected profit, he will not transfer it to the p and account. He will transfer it to the work in progress account because the contract is less than 25% completed. If the completion is from 25% to 49%, one third of the notional profit multiplied by cash received upon work certified, whatever the amount we get, that will be transferred to PL account. Rest of the amount of notional profit will be transferred to work in progress. Similar in case of 50% to 100%, two third of the notional profit multiplied by cash received and work certified will be transferred to the profit and loss account. Remaining profit will be transferred to work in progress account, right? Let's take an example. A company's contract ledger shows the details in respect of contract number 50, which commenced on 1st April 19. This is basically the complete contract. This problem is based on complete contract. Here, material issued 76,000, direct wages, 80,000, cost of the special plant, 20,000, chargeable expenses, 7,000, establishment charges, 5,000. See, the contract was completed by 31st March 2020. That means it's a case of complete contract. And the contract price was $2 lakhs. The value of materials and plants returned to store on 31st March. That means these are the closing balances. These will be debited. These will be credited in the contract account. So the material value at the end of the financial year is $6,000 and uh, the multi plant returned to the store is valued at $12,000. The contract price was received in full on 31st March 2020. You are required to prepare contract account and contract to your personal account. Let's see how it's going to be done. 
This is the format as I discussed earlier also. All the expenses, material issued, direct wages, cost of special plant, chargeable expenses, establishment charges, all will get debited, right? Material in hand at the end of the year will be credited. Plant value at the end of the year will be credited, right? And the contracting account will be credited by the contract price since the contract is complete. This amount is rupees 2 lakh. The balance amount will be rupees 30,000 and as it's a complete contract, the notional profit, the expected profit, the realized profit will be transferred to the p &L account. This is the case of contract account. This is prepared by the contractor. Contractor account, in case of contractor account, he will be debited with the contract account to contract account rupees 2 lakh and as he has made the payment, so by bank account, that is the bank account will be credited with the same amount and his account will get closed. This was the simple example. Next is the difficult example in case the contract is less than 25% complete. That is work in progress. See, work in progress account is there. On 1st April 2019, Contractors Limited started building a cinema hall at a contract price of $6 lakh. During the year ended 31st March 2020, they incurred the following expenses. I think, and you know, all these items will be debited. Material purchased directly, material issued from the stores, 50,000, 10,000, direct wages, 42,000, plant, 10,000, overhead charges, 3,000. The work to the value of 1,20,000 had been certified on 31st March 2020, of which 75% had been received in cash. That means 1,20,000 has been certified out of 6 lakh. So if we take the percentage, if we take the uh, ratio of 1,20,000 and 6 lakh, it is less than 25% complete contract. And out of which... Out of 1,20,000, only 75% has been received in cash. So we will have to apply the formula of accounting standard 7 case number first. The cost of work completed but not certified was $10,500. Material valued at $5,000 were on hand at site. The work completed but not certified will always be recorded at cost minded. On the other hand, the work certified will always be valued at selling price, at valued price, which includes profit content. You are required after allowing the for depreciation at the rate 20% on plant, prepare an account showing the profit earned to date and the amount of profit in the company's account on 31st March 2020. Also prepare work in progress account. Yes. This is the contract account. See, material purchase, debited. Material issued from the store, debited. Direct wages, debited. Plant, opening balance, 10,000 at cost. It will be depreciated. Then, over charges, rupees 3,000, $3,000, sorry. Buy material at site, $5,000. Buy plant at site, $8,000. Work in progress. The value of certified work was one lakh twenty. It was at value. Uncertified work is valued at cost. Amount is 1,30,500. Here it is two work in progress, 28,500. We have not written two PL account. We have written two work in progress because the contract is incomplete and the ratio of completion is only less than 25%. Right? That's why we have not transferred this amount to the PL account, we have transferred it to the work in progress account. So we have shown work in progress debit side also at the end. We have shown work in progress credit side also. So while preparing work in progress account, we have to show both these entries opposite manner. In the opposite manner, work in progress certified and uncertified will come on the debit side and work in progress that is profit reserve will come on the credit side and the difference will be the balance character. Right. This is the explanation. Since the value of work certified 
was less than one quarter of total contract price, the entire notional profit of 28,500 has been kept as a reserve for contingencies. Right? Yes. Thank you.